in this tutorial today we will discuss number of topics because these all topics are interrelated and i will clear these all topics through this single schematic diagram okay i will use just this diagram for all the topics now what are these topics number one the lox cox pathways means what is the pathway uh cyclooxygenase pathway or lipooxygenase pathway we will know about these pathways and uh, we'll also know about the prostaglandins leukotrienes thromboxin a2 how they are produced how they are synthesized and what are their actions we will know about these in the very first point then we will know about the mechanism of action of the aspirin after that we will talk about the aspirin induced ulcer means the ulcer caused due to the intake of the aspirin and aspirin induced asthma we will also talk about this that how asthma is going to be induced due to the aspirin so let's start from the very first point that is the Lox Cox pathways and the synthesis of these uh, eicosanoids means uh, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and thromboxin A2. How they are synthesized? First, let us discuss these points. You know, our cell membrane is made up of the phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. Now, here we have phospholipid. This is the phospholipid. And here we have the enzyme responsible to act on these phospholipid. Noun is phospholipase A2. The name is indicating phospholipase okay this phospholipase will come and it will interact with these phospholipids after their interaction they will produce the arachidonic acid from these phospholipid and now this produced arachidonic acid is a kind of very wonderful substrate for the enzymes like cyclooxygenase and lipooxygenase means these both enzymes are responsible to act on the arachidonic acid what is going to happen when the cox interacts with the arachidonic acid Remember, we have COX-1 and 2, two types of the COX enzymes, and they are available in the entire body, okay? Now, the COX-1, consider, if it interacts with arachidonic acid, it will produce the prostaglandins and thromboxin A2. And if the COX-2 interacts with arachidonic acid, it will produce the prostaglandins. And uh, remember, COX-1, COX-2, both are actually producing the prostaglandins. The COX-1 is producing thromboxin A2, which is not produced by the COX-2. And these both the prostaglandins have got different functions. Before we move towards the functions, let us know about the products of the LOX pathway. According to LOX pathways, when LOX enzyme, lipoxygenase, mainly 5 lipoxygenase, which when this enzyme interacts with arachidonic acid, it will produce the leukotrienes. Leukotriene B4, leukotrienes C4, leukotrienes D4, leukotrienes E4. First of all, the leukotriene B4 is produced. After that, the leukotriene C4, then the C4 is actually a kind differentiated into C4, D4, and E4. That's it. Means these all the leukotrienes are produced by means of the LOX pathway. When the lipooxygenase interacts with the arachidonic acid, it will produce these leukotrienes. And when they are produced, they will find the receptor and then they will show their actions. So like this, we've got both the pathways that according to COX pathway and LOX pathway, the prostaglandins thromboxins and leukotrienes are produced pathways are cleared now let's come towards the actions prostaglandins produced through the cox1 are responsible to do the vasodilation mainly renal vasodilation when those renal blood vessels are dilated then the blood perfusion is a kind improved which is beneficial and it is responsible to secrete the mucus mainly in the git in the stomach this mucus in the stomach is responsible to protect the stomach from the acid secretion within the stomach and the acidic food that we take. Now, when these all acidic conditions are created in the stomach, the mucus lining present in the stomach is actually protecting the stomach lining from the this acidic conditions. Okay, so that this is a kind of protective barrier for these all stuff present inside the stomach. So mucus is actually produced by the prostaglandins in order to protect your stomach. And the same prostaglandins are responsible to do the antiplatelet activity. Means it is actually acting like an antiplatelet factor. Whereas thromboxin A2, they have got the job that is vasoconstriction. They are actually constricting the vessels. And thromboxins A2 have got another job that is platelet aggregation. So thromboxin A2 and prostaglandins are actually somehow maintaining the homeostasis in the body. It is acting like a platelet aggregating factor and prostaglandins are acting as an antiplatelet. It is doing the constriction, vasoconstriction, and whereas the prostaglandins are doing the vasodilation. So like this, these are actually maintaining the homeostasis. In short, the prostaglandins produced by the COX-2 are responsible to maintain the pain, 
fever, inflammation. Now these are the actions of the COX-2. And regarding the lipoxygenase pathway, the leukotrienes produced, they are responsible to find the receptor present on the smooth muscles of the bronchioles. Now these leukotrienes, when they find the receptor, they will interact with the receptor, they will stimulate the receptor, and then the job of this receptor is to cause the smooth muscles contraction that will result into bronchospasm. Along with that, this receptor is responsible to stimulate eosinophils or eosinophils. Now when these eosinophils are stimulated, these are further responsible to release the protease and some more leukotrienes. P, L, I'm writing here, P protease and leukotrienes. Now we here we got leukotrienes from the LOX pathway, leukotrienes from the eosinophils, along with that we got the proteases from the eosinophils. So as a whole we got leukotrienes plus protease. Leukotrienes are responsible to do the bronchospasm and the protease released from the eosinophils or the eosinophils are responsible to cause the tissue damage. So generally we have the bronchioles of this diameter. When these are released, leukotrienes and proteases, the leukotrienes will cause the bronchospasm. They will decrease the diameter. Along with that, when the proteases are released, they will cause the damage of the tissues. So I guess they are actually going to destroy our airways. Okay. Now we just cleared the Cox pathway, Lox pathway, the production of the prostaglandins, thromboxins and leukotrienes, their actions. Now it is time to move toward the next point. The mechanism of action of the aspirin. When you take aspirin, this actually fires this Cox enzyme and it inhibits this Cox. When the Cox is inhibited, what is going to happen? But a very important point regarding aspirin point, if you remember, it is non-selective COX inhibitor. Means it inhibits both the COX-1 and COX-2. When these are inhibited, what will happen then? Your pain, your fever, your inflammation, gone. You know why you people are taking the aspirin? What is the need to take aspirin? Whenever we feel pain, fever, inflammation, etc. somehow, so we take the aspirin, we go for the aspirin and we take it randomly. Do not take these all stuff random. Now what is the reason that uh, I am telling you people not to take it randomly? Because it is going to cause the complications. What kind of complications we'll know later. First of all, let's come to the point that when you take this aspirin, it blocks the COX enzyme. When it is blocked, so your COX2, COX1 both are blocked and that will result in alleviation of the pain, alleviation of the fever and inflammation. And sometimes when you're taking this aspirin without consulting your doctor, it is going to cause complication. Do not take it randomly. Sometimes it can cause the ulcer and asthma. And there are some other complications, but these two are the very major complications regarding the aspirin and regarding our today's topic also. So how the aspirin is going to induce the ulcer? Let us uh, clear this point. When you take the aspirin, it will inhibit the COX enzymes. And when the COX are inhibited, you know, COX-1 is responsible to interact with the arachidonic acid. After it interacts, it is going to produce the prostaglandins, thromboxin A2. Regarding mucus point of view, prostaglandins are responsible to produce the mucus, which is going to protect our gastric lining. Means our stomach is then protected from the acidic attake. If we are inhibiting the cox by means of the aspirin, this will actually a kind of decrease the production of the prostaglandins because when you inhibit the cox then the cox one is not going to interact with arachidonic acid and if it is not interacting the prostaglandins are not produced and if they are not produced then the mucus is not produced so if the mucus is not available then the acid is free to attack the gastric lining like this the gastric lining will be eroded and we call this as ulcer this is how the aspirin is actually causing the ulcer Aspirin blocks the COX by means of which the COX-1 is not interacting with electronic acid and due to which the prostaglandins are not produced and if the prostaglandins are not produced, the mucus is not produced and if the mucus is not available, your gastric lining is no more protected. Means you are prone to ulcer. Now let's know about the aspirin induced asthma. How it is actually going to induce the asthma? Aspirin. Very simple. Concentrate. When you take the aspirin, it inhibits the COX, COX-1, COX-2 pathways, okay, because it is non-selective. When it is inhibited, the arachidonic acid is available. It is no more going to be broken by the COX-1 and COX-2. If it is not broken, means it is available now for the LOX. So this pathway is actually stopped. Now this pathway is available. You can say the LOX is free 
to interact with the arachidonic acid before if it was interacting one time with the arachidonic acid now this lox will interact four or five times with the arachidonic acid and that will result in increase in the production of the leukotrienes and you know that if the leukotrienes are produced way too much then these are going to interact with the receptors available on the bronchiole so when they are stimulated they are supposed to cause the bronchospasm along with that they are responsible to stimulate the eosinophils which are responsible to release further leukotrienes along with that they are responsible to release proteus and now these all collectively are responsible to cause the bronchospasm and along with the bronchospasm the protease released they are responsible to damage the tissues so like this your asthma is a kind aggravated so that's the main cause that how our these aspirin are actually responsible to induce the asthma